What's up? What's up everybody? It's Dr. YouTube here. So in this video, I will talk through how to interpret chest radiograph. Have a look at my website. It's medicsforyou.webs.com where I uh, will be good for healthcare professionals, uh, students, nursing, medical, physiotherapists, pharmacists, where I go through basic physiology, anatomy. So um, if you go to my website, medicsforyou.webs.com, click under radiology while well, I'll go through how to interpret chest radiograph. First thing with chest radiograph is to make sure you understand anatomy. So uh, in your right lung, you've got your right middle lobe, right, uh, sorry, right upper lobe, right middle, right low lobe, horizontal fissure, which divides right upper lobe from right middle lobe. You've got your major fissure, which divides the right upper from the right lower lobe. That's on the sideway view, in the frontal view, the right upper lobe, right middle, right low lobe, horizontal fissure, okay, that corresponds to the hair. You've got your major fissure. Uh, for the left side, you uh, looking sideways, you've only got your right upper and your right low lobe. Correspondingly, on the frontal area, the frontal x-ray, you get, that's mainly the um, right so, so, so there you go, your right upper and your right lower lobe. Fine. So that's anatomy. Um, the upper, the, the lobes of the lung, uh, in terms of the specific anatomy, you've got your, uh, so we'll go peripherally and centrally. You've got your ribs, fine. Uh, anterior ribs, and then posterior ribs. Your clavicle. Remember, everything is right. Is a uh, is the opposite. So that's your right lung. That's your left lung. You've got your scapula. You've got your horizontal fissure. That goes around there. Your uh, major fissure. You've got your uh, right hemidiaphragm. Your left hemidiaphragm. Your trachea divides to right and left. Uh, uh, so the trachea, right and left bronchus, it divides at the carina. You've got your pulmonary vessels, your pulmonary artery, your superior vena cava. So the venous system consists of the superior, inferior vena cava. Okay, superior vena cava is labeled 10, inferior is labeled uh, 15, and you've got your azygous vein. Uh, right, and uh, you have got your uh, thoracic aorta, which unfolds there, arch of aorta, which goes all the way down. You've got your left atrial appendage, left ventricle, and your right uh, atrium. So again, let's just quickly recap. Um, you've got your ribs, clavicles, horizontal fissure, uh, major fissure, trachea, uh, right, left bronchus at the carina, pulmonary vessels, um, your uh, uh, left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, and your right and left hemidiaphragm. So that's anatomy. In terms of uh, Interpreting the chest radiograph, you need to f appreciate the technicalities of it. So first of all, is it an AP or a PA film? So anterior, posterior, or PA film. What happens with a PA film is uh, how chest radiograph works is you've got your chest, you've got your detector, and the beam. In a PA film, the chest faces the detector. Okay, Chest is pressing on the detector beam is going from the back of the chest to the front of the chest. So things are more in size, for example, here. An AP, however, which commonly happens when people are more unwell, uh, uh, what happens is the uh, back is facing the detector. So beam goes from the chest to the back. So the heart structures get enlarged because the heart is 
mainly sitting anterior, isn't it? So as you can see there, the heart does look bigger compared to the PA film. Uh, the other technicality to appreciate is inspiration. Is it good? Is it good or poor inspiration? What happens is good chest x-ray, uh, you can see the ninth posterior rib. Let's see if this was a good uh, spiritual film. So you've got your posterior rib there, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine. So that's a good film, good inspiratory film. So for example, you, if the hemidiaphragm sat up there, it's a poor film. You want to diaphragm is just about the ninth rib. So those are your posterior ribs. You can see the anterior ribs here, actually. So yeah, it's going there, there, and there. Posterior ribs, anterior ribs. Okay. So inspiration is a good exposure as well. Um, so overexposure means uh, everything is too black. So overexposure. And, un and underexposure, everything's too white. And adequate exposure is where the uh, vertebral column is faintly visible, as you can see here. Everything's not too black, everything is not too white. Everything's equal. So, um, different people have different ways of interpreting chest x ray. Um, they, uh, so, we went through the technicalities of it. So position, inspiration, exposure, rotation, I'll go through that at the end. Um, so different people have different ways of interpreting. You can do a checklist system. Um, a for airways, B for bones, C for the carnic silhouette. I'll go through that in a minute. A diaphragm, effusions, uh, F for fields, or lung fields, or the G for gastric bubble, H for hyaluronic region. Um, so that's a checklist system. Some people find it useful. Like you can pause the video or visit my website to read more about it. Credits to uh, radiopedia.org. Um, but my personal system I find quite more useful rather than the checklist system is to just look at, first of all, the technicalities and then the um, a, B, C, and go right to left. So, just to summarize, uh, technicality, remember, was a position. Was it a, a PA or AP film? Um, I is for inspiration. Can you just about work out the ninth rib there? E is for exposure. You can just about work out the vertebral column. R is for rotation. So you've got your uh, the ends of the clavicle should be equidistant to the trachea. So if it's rotated film, for example, the end of the trachea would be sitting uh, not equidistant to one another, be turned on one side. So A for airways. So this is my system now. A for airways uh, is, a, is an airway central, making sure there's no pneumothorax where the trachea would be deviated. Um, uh, OK, so airways. B is for bone and breast, so making sure there's no bony mats because I have diagnosed uh, probable cancer and so on with breast calcification. Okay, breast sits there, as you all know. Uh, uh, okay, and, and the presence of bony mats. So B for bone and breast. Okay, bones. Uh, C is for the cardiac silhouette. So. Uh, should so that you so your cardiac silhouette is there, yeah. You don't want it too big. And what happens when it's too big? Well, it means that it could be heart failure. Now, um, when you say cardiac silhouette, so the diameter of the heart uh, more than that of the thoracic, more, more than half of the thoracic. And when that occurs there's cardiomegaly. So, how do you do that? Well, you measure the distance from here to there and the distance from here to there. 
if the distance of this to this is more than half of this to that, then there's cardiomegaly. Could be heart failure. So I've done my A, airways, B, breast, bone, C for cardiac size. And uh, now I just zigzag, OK? Looking at the apex, apex, making sure there's no apical pneumothorax, making sure there's no lung tumors, which would appear white. Looking at the, again, looking sideways, uh, looking at, is there a peripheral pneumothorax, which would appear white, an absence of lung vessels on the peripheries. Uh, looking at the hilum as well, are there any enlargement or lymph nodes that I could see? Okay, again, just uh, just cast on the cardiac, uh, are there any retrocardiac structures? This would appear whiter than usual, is there a collapse? Looking at the um, hemi diaphragm now, are there any fluid okay, sitting around there? Are there any, um, so that's a gastric bubble there. Is there any free fluid, uh, sorry, uh, any perforation, which would mean, so this, so that's along there. Now, if you see, this bit is also black, and that's concerning. That means there's a air under the diaphragm. That's bad. That means perforation. So let's summarize what we've discussed so far. We've discussed the anatomy of the lung. You've got your lobes uh, of your right, left, and your fissures. We've discussed about the different anatomy, and we've discussed also the technicalities. The peer system, which I use, is uh, position. It's APPA, I for inspiration, good inspiration, ninth rib, posterior rib. Um, e is for exposure, just about work out the vertebral column. R for rotation, you know, equidistant between the clavicle and the trachea. And then A, airway, okay, central. B for bones and breast. Um, C for cardiac silhouette is it appear large. Remember, more than half of the diameter between there to there. Okay, half there to there, and then go zigzag. All right, making sure you're not missing the areas to mi that often missed. Um, so the apical areas. Hyalur regions, peripheries, behind the heart, and effusions below, and also air under the diaphragm. Now let's look at pathology very briefly. Now, uh, heart failure very commonly appears in exams. Uh, to remember the uh, mnemonic, remember A, B, C, D, E. You've got your alveolar edema. So Remember, these are your pulmonary vessels. Uh, you, so this would appear bat wings, so alveolar edema. Okay, it would appear whiter, uh, essentially. You've got B. B is uh, curly B lines. Okay, you've got fluid uh, sitting around there. So they're horizontal lines. C is for cardiomegaly. So remember what we discussed? half of the thoracic diameter. D is for dilated palm, uh, upper lobe vessels. So upper lobe vessels, OK. And E is for effusion. So A, alveolar edema. B for curly B line. C for cardiomegaly. D for dilated upper lobe vessels. E is for effusion. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. If you'd like to give a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. Uh, with interpreting chest radiographs, the more you interpret normal out and abnormal, the better. That's it, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Take care and keep interpreting.